the 2014 election, the general election. Beyond all limits. How do you describe it? 5,000 crores, I and mean, these are the figures that are being talked about. Actually, the and Financial is Times... Is any institution going to look at it? I saw a figure in the Financial Times which said something over 4,000, 4,500 crores. I think it's very easy to believe. I, I do not believe it would be an exaggeration or so. Uh, and it becomes very difficult when giant, by the way, I believe, I personally believe that two or three major corporate houses open little cells within their companies. They have media interests. <coughs> they open cells within their companies on the promotion of the Modi campaign. This is, is clear. Is this a first? I had not come across that before. You had the individual corporate leader's preference, mm -hmm. but I think this time it was more systematic. 2009 gave it a system, mm -hmm. to laid the foundations That's of such right. a system. Mm -hmm. okay? When a leading newspaper in this state, a Marathi paper, its editors were asked at a meeting, how many seats are there in Maharashtra? 288. Then they said, uh, how many does one have to win to a majority? 145. Okay. How much does it cost to win a seat? The chief financial officer and CEO of the company asked the nine group editors. So these guys made a back of the envelope calculation and said three to five crores <coughs> per seat, which is a joke because in Maharashtra, the assembly seat is about 12 to 15 crores. That's right. That's right. But the fact is, the CFO then did a calculation on the back of an envelope. Two of the editors rang me up and spoke to me about it. He did a calculation on the back of an envelope and said, so this is what is going to be spent on the election campaign we must target at least 25 to 30 percent of that. So media today is not talking about any principal coverage, uh, furthering the foundations of the Indian Republic, it's constitutionalism. Very, that's nonsense. I'm saying it's, it's, a, there's a, it's a fundamental worldview difference in that are you viewing journalism as a vehicle of communication, connecting with society, or are you viewing journalism as a revenue stream? This worldview entrenches and you know, glorifies journalism as a revenue stream. Everything else has to fit with that. And the Modi campaign has gone, taken it to extraordinary heights. Absolutely. It's, it's going to get worse. Okay? Now, in 2008, if you read the New Yorker, you have Mr. Vinnie Jain of Bennett, Coleman & Co. telling the New Yorker on record, we are not in the newspaper business. We are in the advertising okay. business. Then another unnamed official of the company says, you can uh, describe us as a, large, you know, um, as a large equity firm with significant media interests. What is Adnav Goswami in Times now then? Well, I think that it is very much part of the corporate framework. Where do they depart from the corporate framework? It's so where, how does it impinge? The issues they raise, how they raise them, who they call, I mean, how does it work? Because you find increasing irrelevance of electronic television. In the entire, in the entire discussion in the last few months, since the Modi government has come to power, the first thing on its agenda, which they are going about very aggressively, is the so-called labor reforms. Mm -hmm. Rajasthan has pushed it through. That's right. Hmm? And saying, we need to give incentives to employers to hire more people, there's too much of this workers' rights business. Now, every newspaper has written an editorial supporting this or saying, you know, with a little few mandatory cautions, you know, uh, that's you know, right. You know, when do the surgery, but don't cut the wrong organ or whatever. But that's they're doing that. However, not one channel has had or newspapers had a voice of a worker in there. Not one. Not one. Second. 93% of Indian workers are in the unorganized okay. sector. What, they, don't, they have no rights at all. Okay? Now, what you're trying to do is to get the other 7% to their level. That's right. right? And le legitimizing the conditions that this 93% work under. Are your shikshak sahayak. Yeah. So, your construction laborer. Your anganwadi, anganwadi worker. worker. Nobody can claim any any rights as these so-called labor reforms. And there is no honest debate around that issue. There is no debate. Yeah. You might have occasionally a newspaper carrying a piece 
by Harsh Mandar who dutifully confronts this kind of nonsense. You might have one or two pieces, you might find a piece by me in one of the newspapers on this, but it's a question of 98 to 2.